everybody. Uh, this is Manny Gomez with Latino Review Media, and I have the pleasure today of being here with Jessica Graham and Amy Walker, who just did a fantastic short uh, film called Into Light. Um, would you ladies like to talk about that? Let's do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Was, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, director little, Jessica. A little bit about the film. Well, I um, sure. I yeah. I feel like I feel like Amy. This is something that Amy. Um, it came from Amy's heart. Like this, I feel like this whole project like grew like this, um, like this amazing, gorgeous tree from Amy's heart and Amy's heart was connected to Inez Mulholland. Um, and so I, I feel like Amy uh, should begin and, and share <laughs> about, um, you know, where this idea came from. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, once upon a time, there was a tree. <laughs> um, so Inez, I had never heard of her. And until a couple of years ago, until about four years ago. And, uh, and she literally used and gave her life. I was just kind of stunned that I hadn't, that she wasn't all over our history books. And um, her story expands even beyond voting rights into human rights and uh, you know, equality for all races and and genders and um, you know peace activism and we wanted to just do a little a little taste a little hook of that in in this short film and so I chose a piece that's a really pivotal moment in her life her final speech that she gave here in Los Angeles 104 years ago and we we go back and forth between this um, the the presence that she was able to be on stage even while she was suffering with a terminal illness, a, an autoimmune disease, um, undiagnosed really. And so that moment of, you know, trying to pull it together and having this struggle and going on stage, um, that's something that as an actor all my life, I've always been fascinated by that moment. And I think it's really powerful to show the, the human and what we, can open up into when there's a when we're aligned with a purpose that's larger than ourselves. So, speaking on that that moment, uh, Jessica, di directing a short film that's just specifically on the moment, what what makes it easier and what makes it more challenging? Well, something that makes it easier is a good script and great actors, and we had both. Um, Something that makes it easier is an amazing creative team, which we also had, and a beautiful location, which we also had. And, you know, Inez, she was such a fascinating character that, you know, there were probably a lot of different moments we could have pulled. You know, it, this, I think this was definitely the right one for this short film, but there are, when I read her biography, I mean, there's just so many moments like that could be their own little story or it could be a longer story or a series of stories. Um, and so, I mean, I think a big part of it is, is um, you know, the story and the script and the people. Um, it's interesting in hearing Amy talk about it. I'm just thinking about like one of my favorite moments of the film is um, when Inez is on stage and she turns towards the, towards the camera and we see what's really happening inside of her. And that moment was something that Amy came up with. Uh, I feel like maybe even the day of the shoot potentially and she's like I don't think like we have the, there's this moment I feel like we, we haven't captured this moment and here's the idea and I was like oh. I was like if we win any best director awards then we have to share it because like this moment is gonna like make the film um and it really does it's like it's it in a lot of ways it um you know, it connects those two worlds that Amy was talking about, the, pri the, the personal, the private, the tender, the vulnerable with the, you know, public and performative and, you know, serving the world persona. Now, I also didn't really know much about Inez going into this film, and I actually didn't even go ahead and research her further until after I saw it. 
But I will say that uh, the way the film was done, I had very specific moments throughout the throughout the film where it, it painted a, a pretty clear picture of, of the person that she was. And uh, for for Amy, what I want to know is what was that like for you, learning about the character, about her, who she was, then writing this, and then playing it. How how, how did how did uh, how, how did that feel for you to take it from paper and then to actually see it on screen? Mm, thank you. Um, this is the first time that I've written something that I feel is all that I wanted it to be. Like the finished product is all that I imagined, like the, the vibrational magnitude of this piece that I had imagined, it's all that and more. And as Jessica said, you know, that's really down to the whole team and my partner Nipun Nair who did the editing and, um, you know, music, the score, the sound and, and everybody who was a part of it. Um, but as, as to Inez, you know, as I was reading, there were some great um, biographies on her, uh, one by Linda Lumsden that I used a lot, and I know Jessica did too, and another one by Robert Cooney Jr. Um, and she, she was so, um, at least seems to be so sure of herself um, really early on, and I was not. I was a very shy young person. <laughs> I was a very shy, young, old person. And, um, and so just reading her and, and sometimes going, oh my gosh, I resonate so much because she would, she would do a lot and then she would have a lot of self-doubt. And I do resonate with that. Um, so, I, you know, I could, I would find windows in, but then I would have this doubt uh, of, can I embody her magnitude? Um, and so, and for me, when I'm, when I'm playing a real person, I like to kind of, it, it may sound silly, but I like to, to um, before I embark, just really ask permission of that person. And I, I feel like stories come to creative people who are open to it. But then I also wanna feel like, all right, if you want me to tell your story, help me, guide me. Do you want me to play this? Is there somebody else? Do you want me to write it? You know, what part am I to play in this? Um, to honor you and your story. And when I felt like I'd gotten the, the, the permission, <laughs> um, then it's like, okay, you know, calling the team together. And then as somebody who was also one of the producers on it, um, getting to then say, okay, team and Martine, especially our, our amazing lead producer, I need you to take the reins now so that I can really just just focus on her and being able to lean on Jessica as an incredible director really helped with that. Um, yeah. I would say what my favorite moment was the, the after she uh, has to go backstage, when she decides to go back up, just, just the way you climb those stairs and turn and then do the facial expression going, going away from the camera, I, I, it showed so much determination and I think it, I was like, wow, so many little little things here and there that I thought were done really, really well. Uh, Thank you. So something else that I, that I noticed was you, you had so many different perspectives in, in that entire area. You had obviously uh, the women who were on the, in the crowd and very much in support. Then you also had the men who were on the other side of this um, re really uh, saying negative things towards towards what she was saying. And I kind of find, found that the, the middleman in all of this was the doctor. Yeah. Because um, he's thinking one way and then, and then he hears the message. It doesn't only just hear the message, but she just sees her determination. And then kind of, kind of you, you kind of see him almost uh, change his opinion towards, towards the end. Like, can, you, can you talk about those creative choices? Yeah, I love that you brought that up because he was a really important character for me and for us. Um, you know, there were a lot of different opinions in the time. And um, and I think sometimes we have a tendency to, to simplify that and think that men were all like, no, votes for women. And women were all like, votes for me. But that's not true. There were women also who were scared of that privilege or who were thinking, no, this, that's just the men's thing. And I want to stay doing my woman thing. Um, and there were men who, who really were champions of women and wanted to support them and sincerely thought 
that because in, in their belief, um, God made women, you know, different and more fragile and that we need to protect them from this harsh world of politics and all of these things. And in fact, here's proof. Here you are going outside of what you were made to do and be as a woman and you're sick and you're dying. And I can't help you if you're gonna keep going outside of your nature and what you're supposed to be and do. And, um, and he's doing that with love. And that's so important because um, it's like, it's not intentionally gaslighting, but it's also really disorienting to someone's sovereign center when, when they feel like this is what I meant to be. And you're telling me that, that I was, that that's not my nature and how hard it can be to hold on to your nature when you know inside what you're meant to be. So um, yeah, that's an important exploration with that character played beautifully by Travis Dixon. Yeah, he was, he was just fantastic. He and I were in a play together a number of years ago and working with him, I was like, I, I, I need to work with him again. And I, I kept saying, I'm like, there's gonna be something, something's gonna come up. And uh, he yeah. ended up sending in a, a tape for us. And it was just like, yes, like he just, he just really, he, he was, he was really able to hit that balance. And I think one of both, both of our favorite moments is at the end when he says, is it worth dying for? Like we just get through our editing process. Um, me and Amy and Napoon did it all virtually because uh, COVID had just hit and we would watch that moment and we would just all just be like, Oh, like just get chills every single every time. time. Yeah. I've seen it hundreds of times and every, even just thinking about it, I get chills. <laughs> Yeah. And I love the moments um, with the doctor and the sister with Vita with uh, Jessica Martin in the hallway. I just, I, I really, I really love those moments. And I love also just visually what our uh, DP Sherry Cock was able to do with just the, the various textures of these spaces. And the, she and I really worked together to just kind of create characters out of each of the locations. And I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of the, of the hallway space and, and, and Travis and Jessica's performance there as well as, as well as Amy's. Yeah, Jessica was fantastic. And that's, a, that's another really subtle role because Vita, she's playing a real character in Ez's younger sister who was also a suffragist and, um, and so strong in a, in a different way. And both of them were redefining what strength means as a woman uh, and just her, you know, her kind of, she's more like water. I, I feel like Inez is more fiery in her approach and Vita just, she's like water. She'll just see that pan with all the crusty stuff on it and she'll sit there and just kind of be with it and watch it dissolve. And that's, that's powerful too. I, I wanna ask the question, are there, are there many, are there any other women maybe that had an impact on, on women's suffrage movement and maybe you've considered doing something like this for? Because, because hear me out, um, I feel like if we had more of this, I really think it could be really inspiring. Like if, if I had a clip of a of, of, of film like this of somebody else who, who would impacted it this way or that way, the way your film did, I, I feel like we can get educated so much more in a, in a way that I don't, I don't see it so often. Absolutely, absolutely. This is short is a proof of concept. We'd like to make a whole series because there are women of all races and all backgrounds who are all instrumental in this movement and, and continue to be. Um, but it's such a specific, such an interesting time in history and now is that time where we need to tell these stories. These are not just women's history. This is our history. Mm -hmm. And we benefit from, from hearing what it was like in, in different arenas in the, in the country at, the, at this time. And throughout, you know, really 75 to really a hundred years of the movement. So we'd like to gather a whole diverse team and really be telling these stories. You know, there's so many, there's so many um, women that, you know, these, the, whose stories just are completely unknown, you know, like Inez, for example, like, 
I didn't know anything about her other than the fact that like I, I recognized the picture of her on the horse in the marches but like I didn't know anything about her she's an amazing character and there's so many more and I, it's so interesting I was even just talking to a filmmaker friend of mine the other day and she had just watched the film on Amazon and she was like you know I just I didn't learn about this I don't you know we don't we don't get taught about this why don't we <laughs> and I'm like I know it's it's a, like Amy said it's our history and there's a, a lot of a lot of history in this country that uh, we don't actually learn. You know, we learn a lot about white male history. <laughs> you know, so that it's definitely time for that to continue to change. Yeah, it's very interesting because this film takes place in the in the early 1900s, and while well, these events, not just the film, uh, but we're now in 2020, and something that really stuck with me about it was. Um, how hard uh, they had to really, people had to really campaign for people to go out and vote and to, uh, and, and the importance of, of voicing your opinion. Meanwhile, all these many years ago, I mean, people like Inez were putting their life on the line for it. Uh, so my, my question to you, uh, my uh, last question would be, what do you hope are the lasting impressions of, of people uh, watching Into Light? You know, it was pretty well summed up. Um, we're one of the film festivals we're in right now is uh, the Sherman Oaks Film Festival. And we were doing a Q&A and the moderator, who's one of the founders of that festival, said that he, he, he has a 12 year old daughter and they were watching the first debate of this presidential election. And, and she afterward thought, I don't know, what's the purpose of even voting? And he showed her this film. And she said, oh, I get it, you know, I get it. And just feeling what these women and men, but particularly the women uh, went, went through and how hard they worked. And it, it gives you a different perspective on what your vote means. And it's like, do it for them. Do it for the people who aren't able to get a day off of work because it's not a holiday yet are the people who had their polling booth moved because of all this, you know, because voting rights are still not equal. It's, it's still happening now. So um, I, I would hope that people would feel galvanized and excited and inspired that they, there are examples of, of women and people to look up to and they can carry the torch forward. Mm. That's so beautiful. And I'll, I'll just say, yeah, like it's, um, it is possible things can change. And we forget how recent that was, that women can't vote. And it was, it was pretty recent. And if, if that could change more and more can continue to change. And I, I loved hearing that um, film festival, um, the daughter of that film fest, the person who runs a film festival. I mean, it's just like, yeah, that's, that's why we're doing this. <laughs> that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we, you know, have all of the beautiful stress of making a film, you know, is because, you know, to, to make some kind of difference, to tell a story that matters. And I definitely feel like we were, we did that with this film. Where, uh, where can we find the film? You can find it on Amazon. It's Into Light, um, and you, or you can go to intolightofficial.com and that'll give you everything. Or I think we have a, like a T-L-Y, uh, uh, Into Light, Amazon. <laughs> that'll do it too. Okay, good. Well, Jessica, Amy, I thank you so much for a wonderful conversation this evening. And uh, a pleasure. I really hope that every, more people get to see this film and get inspired the way I did. So uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. It's a pleasure, Manny.